Welcome to the Kendi and Rabo podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Bar and Grill and the Blind Tiger Bar. Yeah, it's like a sweet shop, no sweets. Hang on a second there now, just explain that to me again, what you're after saying there. Apparently Dublin's only alcohol-free pub is go- has to close its doors. Okay, I don't want to say I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... But, like... You know, there's gimmicks in pubs, like, you know? Yeah. We have a pub that's based on, an, it's 90s, and you go in and, you know, you it's have all the 90s. It's all 90s stuff, and there's National Inc. copy, and you're drinking out of a fucking, I don't know, an old can of Coke. <laughs> but that's the worst gimmick I've ever heard, an alcohol-free pub. I have to disagree. No, yeah, okay, brilliant. Well, I, it's obviously a good business plan. Is it? How's it going I'm down sure, there? I'm sure they must just booked in the wrong type of band or something. <laughs> 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 no, I disagree, because there is... um. There is something out there for people who don't want to drink. Yeah, they're called cafes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why didn't they just... Why, why didn't they just call it a cafe and it might have stayed open? Like, the, 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 the name, the three letters over the door can't be the problem. And or also, maybe it is. and I bet you that they're selling... They were probably... Sell, I don't want to go hell for leather on them now, but they were probably selling cocktails at 15 quid a head. And, like, if I'm paying 15 quid a head, I better wake up with a sore head the next day because... Not, I'm not everybody wants that anymore. Well, I'm not drinking that much either, but, like... It, the idea that, oh, like, it's such a gimmick. There's so many gimmick pubs out there now. It drives me soft. Why can't there just be a pub? Like, and Dublin, Dublin. I fucking hate going hell for leather out Dublin now. It's very but early in the episode to be doing that. It's very early to be going out to Dublin. But Dublin is so full of gimmicks, like. You know, I heard someone say to me one time, oh, I was in this class pub, like, they have all these retro games. You can go in and play Tetris. Yeah. I don't, I can play Tetris on my computer at home. I but don't want to go out to a pub to play Tetris. It's nice. You need to make it interesting for people. No. Do you know what's interesting for people? What? A stout pump, right? <laughs> and a fucking... A stool. A stool, right? Uh, a contrary-looking yeah, bastard behind the An ignorant bastard behind the bar. <laughs> and an ignorant <laughs> bastard sitting in the corner reading The Independent. Any change for the pool table? Yeah, no. yeah like, it's my favourite thing now is that they're starting to realise now that actually people just want a pub. They don't yeah. want any gimmicks around That's it. That's not like true, that. though, as well. I'm sorry now to be the devil's so what advocate. So kind of, what kind of gimmicks do you like well, in pubs? Well, the place you were in in Broad and Boston, you were, you've been talking about you won't shut up about it since you Which came home. Which Done with all the arcade games. I was not in any pub in you Boston were, with arcade games. You were games. in a pub in Boston with a heap of arcade no, games. Sorry, it was marvellous. No, that was an arcade. Buster and Bunnies. No, yeah, uh, 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 Buster and Bugsy, right? Buster and Bugsy. Buster and Bugsy wasn't a pub. Wasn't it was that? an arcade that happened to sell alcohol. Well, you have... What? It was just an arcade that, <laughs> that happened to sell alcohol. That's a pub. It's the complete opposite. It's not. <laughs> if, if, if that place in Dublin was to say... We're actually an arcade, but you can get a drink here as well then if you again, want. I suppose, I hate to say It's it. a completely different thing. I hate to say my argument's going to get shot to pieces now. That'd be like me trying to say Caltra Centra is a pub. You yeah. Because it sell alcohol. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it, yeah. Shopley things as well. I was like. down the pub down the road there, yeah. <laughs> what were you drinking? I was oh, t- but t- now, t- there's t- a thing. Could, can you consume the beverage yeah. on the premises? Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. a restaurant, though. That's a pub. No, no, it's a restaurant. It's an arcade that happens to have a restaurant in it. And also, the Americans are mental anyway. So, they don't... <laughs> Let's grab, let's grab the Americans as well. There's a lot to be said for just going in and sitting down and having a drink and not having some stupid gimmick. Now, the only gimmick I would go with, Ray, yeah. and, and I'd be welcome to have one in Schleigo, is the Hooters gimmick. Oh. You know the Hooters gimmick? Yeah. I've never been in one of them. <laughs> but I would love to pretend fall in love with a woman called fucking, what, like, what, like Tanzania or something. Or, or, her name or is or like Felicity. Hi, my name is Crystal. You know, I'd love that. Like, And then yeah. I go back every day. Like, I'm just going to be Crystal. Like, You, you know? couldn't do that, though. Why? Because you just couldn't. Your nickel wouldn't stand for it. I'd go in there with a big throbbing hair tray <laughs> and a lot of love to give. <laughs> if there was a Hooters allowed in Schleigo. But I yeah. mean, do you get away with that nowadays anyway? Like, is there still Hooters left over in America? Well, there is. I mean, that's great. Yeah. That's great because this is the one thing I will say about the industry like Hooters, right? People were to come out and say, that's not right because, you know, the them women in there now are being exploited and it's not fair now they're you know, to be used for their looks. But they've decided to get a job there and that's great because they know that they can manipulate stupid fellas I think I into going that. in every single week. There was a, a you don't know, undercover I boss. haven't had a drink on this podcast in ages. Sorry, I have taken a little trip of that. Go on. Now. Heineken's provided by Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre. Fair for food items. Thank you very much. Also, the Blind Tiger, they also stocked them. <laughs> now, undercover boss. <laughs> undercover boss, yeah, they did an undercover boss in Hooters. All right. And the boss was real bad. He'd line all the girls up and go, Your nails aren't done. Your eyebrows are shite. Go home. Yeah, but is that a requirement of the industry, though? You can't have shite eyebrows. Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> no, that's I the don't. first thing we know. Because I filled out a CV for Hooters as well. I thought I'd win. And the first thing it does say on the CV is, How shite are your eyebrows? Because they do not tolerate. No, no but it, it's the same no. thing as like, you know, if you're going into a corporate job and they say you must wear a tin of fruits, you right. have to wear a suit going into the job. 
in Hooters, unfortunately, you have to have nice eyebrows. You have to look well. Do you know what I mean? You have to have the nails done, and mm-hmm. you have to have big old boobies. Yes. Or else you're not. But that's okay, because if that's the job requirement. But in you can there, also have not so big boobies. Well, you, then, there you are better have opportunities. You better, you better have a big old chassis. Hey, listen, we can't have no planks of wood going in there, right? Stop, right. Can well, we that's just, okay too. This you can't. Can we, that's can what we talk about is. another American institution. Now okay. that it's in the, in the news. Yeah. Are you familiar with Madeleine McCann? Oh, I'm familiar with her. I didn't know it. Did you know that there was a, apparently now a lady making out that she is Madeleine McCann? Yeah. And um, when she, this story broke, I was kind of going, oh, interesting. This, I thought, at first I thought, yeah, she's a wonder. Do you want to know what completely dispelled my hope this was Madeleine McCann? One. The fact that she's gone away, got a DNA test, and she's agreed to deliver the results or reveal the results on Dr. Phil. Oh, of course. So there we go. This is another one of those cash me outside bitches. Yeah. So the this is a cash me outside, and cash is the proper word here mm. because all she wants is cash, mm. right? And the thing about Dr. Phil is he's a very well-respected Psychoanalyst, therapist, is gentleman. He? Yeah, no, he is like that mm. gentleman. No, no, he is, but he's been tarnished. He's tarnished himself. Yeah, with the television by bringing on cash me outside bitches. Yeah, right. Yes, and and Madeleine McCann looks like look lookalikes, man. I mean, like looks she, nothing like her. This no, woman looks has nothing old. alike. Yeah, no, they're looking for a four year old. Hang on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's trying to pull the wool over on everybody's eyes. She's clear. This is, you know. She's not four, right? She's not. Yeah. She, but this woman, wh- wh- where is she from? Slovakia or something? Something like that, yeah. And she's going, I imagine, just imagine if it did turn out that it was her. It'd be the best episode of Dr. Phil ever. Oh, my God. And then I they mean, bring on the parents. Oh You're my there. God. And then she pure tick with them for leaving on her own in the flat. Well, yeah. <laughs> Where'd well, you leave me, mammy? I saw another video. Yes. Of a gentleman. And he was a police cop. Right. right. So he was a police uh, gentleman for a while, somewhere in the world. Okay. I think England, but I can't remember. And this is another thing that is, we do this quite a lot, like on this podcast, is give you facts that science. aren't facts whatsoever. All, but if you just Google science, Google, Google Battle of McCann science, and this will come up. <laughs> this gentleman said, yeah, that bitch across in Europe. Right, she's nothing to do with Madeleine McCann, and that's not her. She's another cashmere outside bitch going to go on Doctor Phil. But he said what really happened was. And I'm not saying this is true or not. This is what the gentleman said. Mm-hmm. Madeleine McCann's parents were into some shit. Ooh. They were into some weird sex dungeon shit. Jesus. And that's what happened. Not at all. Do I, okay. You know by looking at them. Well, no, no, no. Like. Ray, if you walk through Sligo Town, Ray, pick out the most normal person you can find and they'll be into some weird sex dungeon you think? shit. They're into some sex dungeon shit, Ray. Like who? I'm just saying pick anyone. I'm not going to name anyone out there. I'll tell you one thing for sure. Okay, do you want me to blow some shit wide open? Yeah, name some people that are into some wild no, stuff. I'm not going to name some people that are into wild stuff. Yeah, what's but, wild in your mind? Uh, swings. Okay. Swings? <laughs> swings, ties, and hooks. I see, I don't mind swings because everybody loves a swing. That's yeah, but, not wild. Yeah, but sex swings. Swings. So what about them? So it's all swings and roundabouts, Ray. Ah, they're fine. Right? No, they're not. Have you got one? I'm thinking of getting one. No, don't get a dirty. Ray, you put your back out. We wouldn't have the, the joystick. Last... <laughs> yeah, no, Ray. Yeah, the house can't support that, neither could your body. Ray, you <laughs> fucking. You'd be out to clear McGinnis out in Stratchill every week, man. If you fucking put a sex swing up in the sex house. Sex swing specialist. Jesus Christ. <laughs> She'd be like, Ray, I can't rub that out. And the problem is you were rubbing it out. <laughs> what are their wild things? That, so, that, what are their uh, swings, roundabouts, you said? It's all swings. What's a roundabout? <laughs> sexual terms. It's all swings and roundabouts in the sexual world, Ray. Right. And there's people walking the towns yeah. that you don't know about. Can I, can I, I, I I'm going to get into something that I can't get into fully. But there's people out there who will definitely know what I'm on about. Okay. Okay. And I actually don't mind saying this now. Okay. I'm trying to work out in my head, do I mind saying it or not? Uh, you don't. Just go with your I don't feeling. mind yeah, saying it. Luck. I'm not going to name any names. Right. But I think I have enough proof inside my skull mm. to actually talk about this. Mm. Fuck me. Okay. Put on it wide open. Okay. Because all the way to the top. And, and... Two hands. I have to be very careful. I have to get rid of one of them in the end. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that'll let people know how much I'm really thinking about what I'm about to say. I know, don't be thinking. Where I come from. Yes, Castle Ray, country's come. Lovely, okay, well that's that done. So. <laughs> there is a well-known sexual ring. Is this the one you get in the condom machine? <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing vibrating about it. How much am I going to say here now? It's not the so, one down in Kerry. There's a well-known sexual ring in, in a local building. So much so, it, there's a public toilet in Castle Reed that had to be closed because of the acts that were going on in this. Oh, it was the place to be. And the people 
the people that were going into this particular building mm -hmm. to enjoy themselves, mm -hmm. they weren't going for a hit and miss now or a, a curly sue. Yeah. The people that were going into this building were well known around. They're the same people that you see walking around the town. Yeah. Okay. But then they'd head down every day in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Right. And I used to know a woman who worked in the building and said, oh, they're down there again. No, you want to see there's about 10 of them gone in like. Right. And these are all the people. And did they have a swing in there as well? They they must have had some swings <laughs> roundabouts inside in this place. Yeah. And it's a well-known fact that... This and is, is it still running to this day? No, because they had to block the public toilets that they were going into. Did I dream this? No, they this? didn't block the public <laughs> toilets. This one, like, your man would say... Oh, but did I dream this? Uh, Jerry, did, uh, not Jerry, uh, George Michael. Was he not arrested in a toilet such as this? Yeah, but one Cassarine's toilet. No, he was arrested. No? <laughs> no, no, George Michael had nothing to do with the one in Cassarine. No. But there was a toilet like it somewhere else. Yeah, but right. that's what happened, you see. They go into these public toilets. and that, But this was a bit... And I, look, maybe the people at Cassarine say, stop on about that, Mark. But yeah. I'm not going to stop on about it because this is something that was clearly happening in broad daylight. That's definitely the name do of the episode know? anyway. Stop on about it. Stop on about <laughs> it. But my point is, Ray... You could walk down the town now and see boys, right? Mm -hmm. Just walking around normal and go, there's an upstanding member of the community. Society, yeah. yeah. He might work in the credit union. Yeah. He might be president of a golf club. I'm glad He might be an accountant. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm just picking random stuff. Yeah, like, but I you feel know bad I mean? for all the random stuff yeah. you're picking. God <laughs> forbid the president of the credit union is listening no, to this. No, it's not. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, these yeah. are just upstanding members of society. Yeah. Do you know? Your man runs local hoosers. It's just don't be, you know. And they're... These guys could be into some shit, you and know? what about it? I'm just put life's too short not to be. Mickeys are too short not to be going in and enjoying <laughs> yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. You know? But yeah, maybe it is okay. You know, it is not maybe it's okay. But how far does it go to when it's not okay? Ara, what do you mean? Uh, when it like spills out into the street. <laughs> Sure, you're watch, driving by and next uh, Ray, thing, that watch spilled out. Ten to the or street. twelve people just spill out and just a massive big in a big ball, big <laughs> ball of public public display of affection. <laughs> <laughs> big dose of PDA is happening <laughs> on O'Connell Street. You know, and that's the thing, you know, because you know you like think of the children is what I would say. Anyway, yeah, but that's all know? that's going to happen as a result of all this stuff. What children? Yeah, no, yeah. Well, I don't think children can happen with the way things are going. You know what I mean? Right, well, we move swiftly on from that subject. There'll be no children coming from this way. I'll tell Christ you that much. That's all I'll say. Me. So, I didn't know you were going there at all. Sure, how was I to know either, Ray? You dragged it out of me, you prick. I, want to I didn't even want to say it. We'll move swiftly on from that subject to something completely different. Yeah. Knock. Right, come on. Okay, well, some of these <laughs> knock or lures or fucking Medjugorje or something help Knock is what you need now after that oh, dis go discussion. On. Yeah, go on. Before, on Paddy's Day night... Yeah. The night before, the eve before, it was the night before Paddy's it was Day. was the night before Paddy's Day at all through knock. <laughs> all through knock. Now, yeah. the creature was drinking. Yeah. No one. <laughs> I had the pleasure of covering um, a gig for Vinnie Higgins, mm. uh, Sligo's premier mic stand provider. Yeah. He was providing premier mic stands. How many mic stands do you have to bring down? Twelve. Jeez, big gig. Big gig. Woo! So, I'll tell you what it was. It was in the Basilican Knock. Right. Are you familiar with the Basilican Knock? No, I've never been into it, I don't think. Right. Well, yeah. this is now. Do you know much about knock? All I know about Knock is that um, someone was blind drunk one night oh, in no. Knock. I'm no, gonna... I'll tell you what happened in Knock, Ray, because right. the people need to know. <laughs> one day, someone was blind drunk in Knock. Right. Back in 19... 1879. Was, 1879. That's he was it. blind drunk. He was after being at a hot fuss gig. That he, person at, is a Mary. Uh, a Mary Byrne was... Mary Byrne was blind drunk, drunk in Knock. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, man, she was seeing double everything. And for some reason, she saw some kind of apparition. Right. Uh, that turned out to be... Yeah. Oh, you want me to kick in there? Who did it turn out to be, You Ray? tell me. Who did you think it was? Vladimir Putin. No, <laughs> it turned out to be the Lord above Mary, who, yes. of course, birthed the baby Jesus. Yes. Right? Who or else was with her? Jesus. Uh, who else was with her on the day? Well, she known, who, was there someone else with Mary that day? Who? So, on the day... Right, this is the mad thing. Before we get into the Basilica, right? Mary blind drunk and she saw Mary. No, the evening of Thursday, the 21st of all. And I'm wondering, does and everybody Mary, know this? Sorry, that's I'm after forgetting as well. Mary obviously then came out then and said to your one, they, in order to save the Irish people, build an airport. But don't build it. Build it 20 mile out the road. Right. But away the, from Knock. Away from Knock. On but, the hill. And that's that's where it came in 1826. What year was it 79. Again? Yeah, 1689. And Se she came, 1879. Mary Bar with blind drug. Stop now. And Mary appeared in front of her in, is it called an apparition? Yes. And said, let the Irish people build me an airport in my name. Well, first of all, before ever that happened, yeah. Mary. Um, Which the, Mary now? Mary. The Mary. Oh, yeah. The Virgin. Mary Virgin Akendi. Yeah. Up inside in heaven. There yeah. she was sitting on the couch. Relaxing. <laughs> right? Taking yeah. it easy. A nice of an evening. It was a Thursday. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And she got the call. 
There's a gig. Go on. Right, Mary's like, ah, oh, Jesus, right, sound. Where are we going? Where are we off to? Knock, she was told. Give me a ton 50. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a three-piece gig. <laughs> Why, who, who who did she pull together well, for Well, this band? is the thing. She had to pull together a band for it. Right. So she gave uh, she gave uh, St. Joseph a shout. So That'd be the husband. Right. Oh, St. Joseph is her husband. Yeah, it? so it's Mary. So not only, so he's self-employed as a carpenter. <laughs> yeah. But he also sometimes takes the tools out of the Personal band. Personal appearances. Yeah, but he throws in the guitar and so, and <laughs> yeah. he says, come on, now we go up the road. So, and we're not, and I have to make this very clear, we're, we're obviously taking a comical view of this. Don't be but, worrying, Ray. But we it, are fucking I Catholic. am bringing this, I am bringing this subject for the good reason of it. it's a marvellous story. Yes. Um... And I do believe it happened. So Our Lady, Virgin Mary. Yeah. She uh, brought Sa- Joey with her. St. Joey. Yeah. And uh, St. John the Evangelist. Right, okay. And right? I, I've never seen an Evangelist player before, but they're supposed <laughs> to be... <laughs> she... <laughs> she has... <laughs> Mary, Mary brought the guitar. Joey was on drums. And, and, and John, John was on, John John was was the, on evangelist. the Evangelist. Yeah, he's the Evangelist in the night. <laughs> <laughs> but the evangelist had something lovely about it to have said. Oh, sound. it's a lovely sound off an evangelist. The three of them, anyway, there was a little church in down in Knock, and the three of them appeared at the gable wall of the church. Now it was pissing rain, right? That was right, it was a gable wall. It was a gable yeah. wall, now you remember the song, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, it was yeah. pissing rain, horrible night. Dirty old town is the song, isn't it? <laughs> no, Against the, the gable wall. <laughs> no. So Mary Byrne, anyway, right? She was from the village, and she was going home with the priest's housekeeper, Mary McLaughlin. This is the same Mary Byrne that appeared on X Factor as well, uh, by the, the way. The very yeah, same. Yeah, the very same yeah. woman. Um, Byrne stopped shuddly, suddenly when she saw the gable of the church. She claimed that she saw three life-size figures. She ran home at that point to tell her parents, and soon others in the village gathered. That was these days now. She wouldn't have to run anywhere. She checked the phone out. She'd have, she'd have a video straight away. Hello. Live yep. on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Mary's live on TikTok, TikTok live. Look at yeah. the three of them up against the gable wall. Come here. What day was it again? Uh, it was the twenty first of August, eighteen seventy nine. Oh, right, okay. Didn't have the Christmas decorations out early, no. But the worst thing is, a shite night in August, which I suppose is not unusual for Ireland. Yeah. She ran home anyway. So other others in the village gathered. The witnesses said they saw apparition of Our Lady, Saint Joy, and, and John and the Evangelist yeah. at the south gable. Uh, end of the, the evangelist out of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Behind them, and a little to the left of St. John, was a plain altar, right? So they brought an altar with them as well, Jeez. set it up. And on the altar, they set up a little cross, and they brought a lamb. Right, okay. I'll tell you what, they have a good and sound system now. You're, I you're, say. you're familiar with the lamb. Mm. No, this is all the stage set up. Why did they bring a lamb with the them? The lamb of God. The, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. 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 So, so that lamb was nervous throughout. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to do a little bit of communion? Yeah. Uh, but there was a scatter of angels around the lamb. A farmer, about a half mile away from the scene, later described what he saw as a large globe of golden light above and around the gable, circular in appearance. She's a great lightning. For nearly... <laughs> <laughs> they, had some rig, they, had some, they brought the big rig they with them. They got the big rig with them, yeah. Jesus. Fine gig. For nearly two hours, a group that fluctuated between two and perhaps as many as 25 stood or kneeled, gazing at the figures. Now, but, when it says fluctuated, yeah, right? People I, came and went. If people came and went, it mustn't be that good. Yeah, it wasn't a great gig, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Six songs in one. Mary Burns says to Mary McLaughlin, come on. Yeah, we might go. I, <laughs> To be home, but the kids to bed. There's good cracked out the road, I think, actually. Yeah. We co- we'll come back, though, later. We'll come back later. Um, it was flat out raining, but they didn't get wet. So they must have had some sort of a marquee up on Oh, there was definitely a, a marquee. I mean, it must have been tunes of balloons <laughs> flying. <laughs> the vision of Mary was described as being beautiful. Lovely. She was a fine-looking right? woman. She was standing a few feet above the ground. How do you stand a few feet? She, was just, she must have had staging She was literally flying. No, they had staging with them. This well, invisible right. staging got in Toman. Um, <laughs> above the ground, she was described as wearing this white cloak, hanging in full folds and fastened at the neck. Jesus she was described me. as deep in prayer with her eyes raised to heaven, her hands raised at, a, at to the shoulders, or a little higher, the palms inclined slightly to the shoulders. So Joy, he was looking at her. Right. Right. Joy gawking at her. And John, the evangelist, uh, was flat out in the evangelist. <laughs> Looked like a man that was saying mass. <laughs> right, okay. Hmm. So, and, um, so did they say mass? Like, did anyone there was move? No, no, there was no movement. And no you're sure someone downward. didn't paint this on the fucking wall? No, but that's the thing, right? Fucking 25 people seen this. Yeah, okay. I know it was 1879, it was a good while back. <clears throat> yeah. But it'd give you those shivers. Okay. So if, let's just. We're getting into it now, we are. Imagine this did happen, like. Yeah. Wouldn't that, your faith would Imagine be... Imagine is the word, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm serious now. Yeah. 25 people can't be wrong. No, no but 25 and people can be, be in cahoots, though. They can't. Why, how would you have an AGM in the parish hall back in 1879 going, someone needs to put knock on the map? Well, maybe they did. I, I doubt it. No, but hang on now. You're talking about 25 people can't be in cahoots. Have you heard of Waco? <laughs> 
Okay, fine. Fine. But Have I you heard think, of the Westboro Baptist Church? Yeah, no, but I don't think... No, I think this was... It, because I've, and Mary and Mary... But they've fine. always been cynical. I've played knock in football, and they've always been cynical, Ray. <laughs> no, I'm it's not cynical. It's built into the people of knock. I believe this actually happened, and, and in that belief, then, you do get a bit of a shiver down the back of your neck and go, Jesus. That I'm just going to play the role of the Tansel song. I'm going to try and tantalise you out into having an argument. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... <laughs> 25 people isn't long building up, right? Yeah. Imagine the misery in what year was it again? 1386, right? 1879. In Knock. In Imagine yeah. the misery and misfortune that's going on around I there. I think it was a lovely spot to live at that Mary time. Mary Bird blind drunk in the middle of the road. <laughs> no, she's not. She's have to come back with the priest housekeeper. They're sound. Mary Bird might not have been of sound mind and body. But they were all of sound mind and body. No, but you don't know that. They though, did because they did an inquisition at the time. They'd quizzed them. And people better than me and you landed down. And I said, There's no one now. better than me and you. You know, well, at the time there was. Did you see the Pope in his jacket? Come here, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I got a sec. Yeah. So um, <laughs> the Pope landed down the bomber jacket, you're telling me in that chat. I'm just saying that, so there's a couple of different scenarios that might have happened here. Number one, right, she might have thought she saw something and they, she went down then to John's house down the road and said, I'm have seen something. And, yeah. John, and John said, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so the whole village fled And he around. rang the neighbours and said, Mary is no losing it again. Huh? There's no phone. Doesn't matter. He called to all them and said, Look, Mary's losing it again. Can we all just go down and nip this in the bud? Okay. And just say we saw what we saw. Right. Right? That's number one. <laughs> it's number a pretty good one, though. Yeah. Number two, then, is what I was saying and to you. And you mean it went, got too far? It, got it went hand, too then. far. And then, if, and then they realized, then, Ray, you see, because they tasted the wonderful salt of fame. Oh, okay. sucking from the salt of the Hollywood fame. Yeah. Okay. And they said, actually, do you know what? There might be something in this as well. Now, we might get a gift shop out of this, right? <laughs> Several hundred. Do you know what I mean? We could get a fucking gift shop out of this. As we could we be could sending, get an airport. I'll tell you, our ancestors could be sending candles. They hadn't even invented planes at that time. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing, you see. They could have then said, okay, well, let's fucking, there's something in this. Let's go, hmm. right? And it, got, it went too deep. Right. And it went straight to the top and knock. Right. Right? Or the other one is, is that they actually all just said, look, lads, I don't know. My dates are going to be wrong here now. Medjugorje did it. Lourdes did it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Come on, lads, you have it in us. Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. And all it takes about 25 of us to buy into this, lads. Yeah. And we could be on the map for the rest of our shaggy lives. Can I ask, they're all very fine hypotheses. Thank you. I like Thank it. you, Raymond. Yeah, in fairness, I'm going to validate your feelings. Thank you. Something I've been doing recently. Yes, okay. It's working Lovely. out really well for And me. I'm going to validate my own feelings and say thank you for acknowledging yeah, me. I've acknowledged how you and how you feel about this. Look, it's brilliant. Okay. But yeah. I will ask you a question. Go on. If, in fact, they were telling the truth. Yeah. Deep, search deep within your soul for a second there. Now. Yeah. There's something inside so strong. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. If inside in your soul there now, you actually, just for a minute, just believe for a second that they were telling the truth. Yeah. And uh, the Virgin Mary and the two, jo the Joseph and the John. Yeah. Did show up mm -hmm. back that fateful night and knock. Yeah. Does that fill you full of any sort of excitement or wonder or anything of the above? Yeah, it does. I mean, seriously now. No, no, it does. Yeah. Because I would absolutely love if there genuinely was an afterlife that was tremendous. You said Mary was sitting up on the couch. I'd love a comfortable she couch wasn't in heaven. <laughs> no, you said that oh, she was no, above. I was setting it up, yeah. Because yeah. when I was thinking about this story, I was thinking, uh, like, who got selected? Who got told you had to go down and do a bit? Yeah. Because like, it's funny, it was two hours. Yeah. That's exactly the length of time a band had played. This could be like a Bentley Boys thing. <laughs> like, it could be like where there was loads of them up there. And they, yeah. they just sent out this particular <laughs> this band is, happened to this be is Mary. What, yeah, this is what was selected you know, on the night. Yeah. Because actually, you know, in, in a weird way, I think Abraham had booked the night off. <laughs> because he had went, <laughs> yeah. So Mary had to go and cover the gig, like you know. Fair but I do, Ray. I absolutely love the idea that there might be something else out there. But even the fear, then, if there is, if it was real, oh, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that had come to mind very quickly. <laughs> but if like, we're aware of this, yet we've chosen to mock it yeah. and move on with life and live but in sin with sex swings inside public toilets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But it isn't isn't God all forgiving? Like yeah. I was told when I was eight year old, right, when they shoved me into a box. Hmm? Right? What do you mean shoved into a box? So when I oh, was confession. A, yeah, when I was eight right. year old, like I got shoved into a box with a priest. Yeah. Right? They told me, regardless of what you've done, Mark, I know you hit your sister with an umbrella. Yeah. Shout out to Eleanor. Right. Big shout out to Eddie there with a wall of you with an umbrella. Yeah. That's uh, the same sense. Yeah. So he's going to say that's fine. Hmm. And then you're allowed back into heaven again. Yeah. Which I think, you know, caused a spree of, I was robbing shops, banks. <laughs> but I was going to confession every week. Right. And he was saying, don't worry about it. No, you're just say three Hail Marys. Yeah. You know? So. 
there is supposed to be, a, is it an abolishment of sin? Oh, yeah, you can obviously confess that you can be absolved. Absolve. Absolvement. You can be absolved of your sin. Yeah. And every human is born with original sin. When was the last time you were in confession? Jesus, Ray. I'm trying to think back now because I was gigging last weekend. <laughs> 1996. I have a funny thing that you have an awful scat of a sin that you need to Oh, move. man. I tell you what, man. Did he and what if you don't hit a priest before you go? What? Well, no. I don't mean hit a priest. Sorry, I come out wrong. What if I you mean, don't get a confession? If I hit a priest, I could just I could be absolved of that sin. We actually, our priest uh, came up with a mar- marvelous idea back in the day. Hang on, yeah, go on. Sorry, he yeah, but, he started just doing kind of confession masses. Right, okay. Where you just show up, a hundred of us up inside in the thing, and you, and just, you all just put your hand he, up. Yeah, I was I, I was yeah. right because. <laughs> no. Is that what happened? Yeah, he said a bad word. Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Marty, I didn't realize yeah. you were and right. Then the up, yeah, fucking yeah. hell. And oh. I, yeah, I stole, I stole your banshee. No, so and isn't there another thing, Ray? Though, where isn't the last rites supposed to be? Isn't that supposed to but abolish it, all sin? Yeah, but it's again, it's the availability of priests, and we don't have a whole lot of them anymore. Well, you know, I mean, get, I'd be get, straight down. Father Julian is still ticking. Mm. I'd be straight. Yeah, but if you get run over in the street now tonight, God yeah. forbid, touch wood. Father Julian will take a while to get to you. <laughs> well, yeah. That's but, what the health service is there for. So then Stick don't... Him on life support. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but then don't you get stuck then in purgatory. Yes. But that's okay too because there's priests in purgatory too. Unless you're a Protestant yeah. and they don't believe purgatory exists. So do they go straight in or straight down? It's straight up or down. It's straight up or down. Now it's higher or lower, yeah. says them. And you, you can't... Know, I don't think you can buy it anyway either. Um, so, look, all I'd say is I really like the idea that you have in your head right there. Mm. I like the idea that there might be something else afterwards. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot to be said for not thinking too far outside the box. Mm. And what I mean by that is everything nowadays can be explained. Right? Except for this. No, no, this can be explained too. No, it too. can't. No, no, it can't. It they can't, can't. It can't. They've decided that they can't no. explain it. I don't know. Okay, no, That's no, 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 why yeah. there's a basilica there. Because it can't be explained. Because it so can't be explained. So you can't explain something, get a basilica. But isn't it mad too? We're tipping around, right? We're tipping around the country. Mm-hmm. Where literally the Virgin Mary has appeared for two hours. Uh, allegedly, yeah. Right. Elvis yeah. didn't even play Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Do apparently, you know? apparently they have her lined up for five nights in Crow Park. <laughs> But that's the thing. You say Croke Park. You've never been in the Basilica. It's oh, sorry, friggin, I've never been to Croke Park. It's yeah. friggin' massive. I think I probably have at some stage, but I, I can't remember. It, it like. it, uh, we were doing a concert for that was going out live on Christian television. There was about 40 million people watching this concert. In, Is this in, last week? This was a Paddy's, on Paddy's Eve. Lovely. 40 million people tuned in on Chris, Christian television channels from India, from the States, the whole lot. Yeah. And it was like a, a fantabulous choir, young and old. Yeah. And, um, and there was a trad band. Yeah, and they had did it, and they would oh, not definitely got the best priest. What? Oh, is he there a good is father that? trendy. See, that's the good thing as well about if you have had an appearance or an apparition, <laughs> you get all the good. Geez, stuff. you get the good priest. He's not too old. Yeah, he's okay. like I would say he's in his fifties. Love, that's young. That's, that's a young, young priest. priest. He comes out, right? He introduces yeah. everyone, but he looks straight down the barrel of the camera. Oh, he knows. He knows he's how media to work. trained. Yeah, he's media trained. Lovely. And he's kind of rubbing the hands. Says, How's it going? Welcome, everybody. To the Basilica here, here knock. We have mass tomorrow at 9, 10, 12, and 8. Go ahead. Yeah, and he's. Jeez, they're in four masses a day. Oh, there anywhere is. else in the country. It, but it, like, it's like Nashville, but without country bands, yeah. it's. it's, it's St. Joseph yeah. statues. Yeah, yeah, jeez, that's exactly, that's such a, that's actually such a great I always course. felt that the main street in Knock, because of loads of little ornament shops, Yeah, but the same way in Nashville, you've loads of little pubs with, with yeah. country bands. The country bands in them. Yeah. them, yeah, yeah. That's what, it's, it's the Nashville of the West. What I'm trying to say to you is, and I'm agreeing with you, why bother your ass trying to explain everything? Yeah. Why not just live your life going, there's a higher yeah. being? very comfortable. And I'm going to live my life thinking that there's a higher being. Yeah. I'm not going to listen to Ricky Gervais and fucking, uh, what's your man's name? It was chatting to Gay Byrne that time. We're talking. <laughs> oh, what's your man's uh, name? Stephen Fry. That's right. They they are, I presume, right. But maybe I'm going to choose to ignore that. Maybe you're going to just you know, go along with the 25 people that said to I see might the go actual with, Virgin yeah, Mary. Maybe I might go along with Mary Bird with Blind Rope one night <laughs> in 1286. 150 years ago. <laughs> right? I, I'm gonna, maybe I'm just going to go along with and live my life that way instead. Yeah. And you don't have to just take every fact as fact. You can fucking pick and choose. We're yeah. human beings, we can pick and choose. Like the it. only problem with that is, Ray, and this is, again, I don't mean to go after the medicines, right? But the exploitation of religion and faith mm. is fucking astronomically bad yes. when you look at the Westboro Baptist Church or I do see lunatics in suits right with private planes Jehovah's Witnesses right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one I know to wear suits <laughs> 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 they wouldn't have the jacket on most of the time you the white shirt but 
I didn't know the private planes. No, I'm on about these faith healers. Oh, yeah. You know, your man comes out and he goes, I got, I, I got to fucking pam the gay house yet. <laughs> you know them boys like. <laughs> he slapped the gay house up there. Up have his sexuality be gone. And yeah. he slaps your man across the jaw. Yeah. And your man is fucking having to see Conjunctivitis of his yeah. be yeah. gone. Yeah, your man is like, I have a pain in my ear. Oh, you're absolved of your pain in your ear. And there's boys who are like, I'm in a wheelchair. As in, like, I just chose to be in a wheelchair. Stand up. Well, I yeah. can stand up. <gasps> it's a miracle, you know? These people, and then they're taking massive donations of people who have the faith that you have. Yeah. You say you believe these 25 people that were around in that yeah. years ago. And so you, he could try and exploit. He could say, this fella, no, I'm going to exploit the faith that this fella has now. Yeah. I'm going to tell Ray that I'm going to absolve him of his... What's wrong with me now you're going to do? Jack and Jones. Good, right. Yeah. <laughs> I had a right look up and down there. <laughs> you don't have to look far. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to bizarre of, of his Jack and Jones be gone, Ray. And then, you know. I'm standing there with no shirt on. All of a sudden, you're standing there going, I hate Jack and Jones. I'm no. mad into Farah. Okay, I wonder would he do anything about my uh, sleep talking. Oh, well, yeah, but that's the thing. <laughs> sleep talking be gone. You know what I mean? If you had to go to a faith healer, is that what you'd try and get rid of? Um, It's probably one of the, that and me jaller. What's your jaller? Me belly. Ah, you haven't got a Ned Kelly to your name. Man. I you're think I, I wouldn't mind that. You're fit as a fiddle. How's the triathlon trade going? Shite. Shit, you just brought... I didn't even think about this. It just came to I'm me I'm going there. to be very straight with this podcast experience because yeah. obviously this, this is not in my nature to tell you a fib. Yeah. Um, you haven't trained since? I haven't done it. Absol- I haven't done a, 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 a single cent of training since. Why? Because I don't want to. You haven't time. <laughs> I have, have time, so I have time. You can choose to make time. I had plenty of days off there recently and I haven't done a tap. Okay, so... And I'm blaming it on not having a bike or an ability to swim. <laughs> <laughs> or an interest in running. I don't want to hurt any interest in any of that sort of so, physical activity. So, do you remember when ye asked me to do it and I said no? I, I learned that from a Kasserine man. I hear I told you so coming. No, no, I won't say I told you so because you feel it, okay? <laughs> I can feel so, it, yeah. I learned that from a Kasserine man, okay? So a Kasserine man once said to me, when someone asks you, do you want to do something? Don't tell them I'll have a think about it. Mm-hmm. Don't tell them I might. Mm-hmm. He said, if you don't want to do it, you just say, I'm going to stop you there now. Yeah. I won't be doing that. Yeah. Which is what I said. You did. And you should have said. I should have said that. Because now you're, you've you cornered yourself now. I have. Publicly. Publicly cornered yourself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And now you're... Do you know what would be more in our line of work, Ray? Mm. For us. There's a wonderful football club. Do you know what football is? I've heard of it. Yeah, okay. So I'll try and explain this to you. There's a football club called Sligo Rovers. And they're based here in Sligo. Yeah. Which is mad that the name just matches up. (laughs) But they are doing a 50 kilometer um, walk in April. And Brendan, you might know this. Is it, who is it for? What's the fundraising for? It is for the development of the club. And if anyone yeah. has looked at Sligo Rovers recently, yeah. you would see that there's massive development that we need pushed through for Sligo. Now, this is a savage community-based in walk 50k That's in April. That's way longer than what the triathlon wanted to But you do it at your own pace. Oh. I went to Dorley Park today. Yeah. Right? Me and Ali, because Dick Love was working, right? And I, the first thing is, the sun was shining today. And yet again, I was reminded that I am a stay-at-home mother. Because... All I was doing was waving at mammies going by in prams. <laughs> Every mother in Sligo was out in Dorley Park today, by the way, walking around in the sunshine. How come you didn't call in? And they were going, how, are, oh, how is yours doing? Actually, six months, you're not too bad. No, Aww. you know, I didn't know, but I did call past your place, by the way. And I, I walked by the Mercy School, there yeah, up by you. And you chose you know. not to come near me. I wouldn't bother you yet, Ray. That would, right. You know what I mean? I wouldn't bother you when you're working and I'm a stay at home, Kendy. So mm. I went full stay at home, Kendy, today. And I, I, met, I walked a couple of kilometers around Dorley Park. Okay. Right? And, and then I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm doing this Sligo Rovers 50k. Because if I can donate, if I can help Sligo Rovers, yeah. that means something to me that a triathlon doesn't. And walking 50k in a month is far more doable, Ray, than someone who can't swim <laughs> trying to do a triathlon. Is Ali also doing it for Sligo Rovers? Yeah, no, but she's she, not walking. Well, she'll be there as part of it. Like, gotcha. No, but she's, you know what I mean? she's not doing the So what, what I want to do is I'm probably going to set it up under Kendi Rabo's name. Oh, God. Now, you don't have to do it. You can walk five of the kilometers if you want. Are you telling me that on top of the feckin' triathlon that I don't want to do, I now have to walk 50k? I'm telling you, Ray, all I'm telling you to do is admit your defeated. Right. I'll, do you know what I'll do? I'm going to take... Admit your defeated. I'm going to take some the advice. Triathlon. I'm going to take some advice. I'm going to take Castlery Man, good Castlery Man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan had his hand you up. You fucking, Ray, you made... I'm not defeated listen, yet. Ray, you made your bed. Right? Yeah, and I'm sleeping in a far too much, and that's the problem. <laughs> Brendan, what were you going to say to me there? Just so people know that you can walk, swim, run, crawl. So, Ray, you could do the 50k with all the things. Oh, now, yeah, so, so your, your triathlon. I could swim. The, oh, my triathlon could count towards us. Could count towards us, Ray. Right. So, that's brilliant. You could still do, we could still do a Kenji Rabo thing for Psycho Rovers. Because mm-hmm. I know you're a massive Psycho Rovers fan. Don't, what's the name of the place they play? 
Sligo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's something that I am. Remember I said to you, I need to be in on something. I'd love to do that for Sligo Rovers. Well, belt you away. Know? You do that and I'll do it. But you can come towards it. I'm doing Absolute it under Kendi Rabo's name. I'm going to go walk with my daughter, Ali, every morning. Very Not good. everyone. I'm going to get 50k done, right? <laughs> and that's more in my line of work, which is in my own time, at my own pace, with no one watching me. Right. You decided to do a triathlon and you fucking <laughs> can't swim. Right, you know? want to move on from that now. Yes. I don't want to talk so about now, it anymore. So I don't. Go on now, Ray. What else have you? Right. Um, Jesus, what am I doing here now? Uh, I want to talk a little bit about not listening in conversations. Uh, what? Well, I'm not listening to you. What are you saying to me there again? Sorry, <laughs> explain that again. Because um, we, we haven't really talked since St. Patrick's Day. By the way, congratulations on your presenting of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yeah, this is the weirdest thing is that we haven't been in this room in a long time. No, in about because, two weeks. Yeah, because we did a live show and then we, we went with Chase and Abby as well, yeah. which is a great episode. Um. Thank you very much. I was you did very loved well. It. I loved it. Did you enjoy it? I did. We watched it from the comfort of our own couch. I made one slip. I nearly got away with it. What did you do? There was a two-hour live stream. Oh, I, wait, was it when you said about um, taking your baby out of the box? Oh, my God. So I just said, I said to myself, I can't be the Kendi. That's, I have to be Fall Charlotte watching this. Everyone's watching this. The county council are paying for us. Mm. I, fucking, I better be on the button here. There now. was two places where you were. Hi, what did I say? I think when you interviewed the dog... When I interviewed the dog, that was absolute gold. <laughs> it just, yeah, your your choice choice of interviewees. I suppose you got more chat out of the dog than you some of the people. That's the truth. People Ray. were not in the humour for talking to you. People are terrified when they, except for kids. Kids don't care. Kids are like, yeah, come on, let's yeah. go. Because kids have no inhibitions, right? They just go for us, yeah. which is great. Don't try and interview parents. They're useless, right? <laughs> so, I got through all of that. I interviewed a load of dogs. Yeah. Okay. That was just a did, personal yeah. highlight. Yeah. Um, I had a tremendous interview with a member of the Ukrainian community in Psycho, oh, see, which was a good, yeah. fucking breath of fresh air to hear. It was yeah. unreal. I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. And she was very well spoken and very, very um, thankful for what she's got. Mm. Now, I nearly met her through the whole stream. They said, got it in my ear. Okay, Mark, five minutes left in the show. Mm-hmm. You just go up with Robbie and finish off the show with Robbie, the other presenter. Yes. Got up there. Robbie the lesser said, presenter. Yeah. Well, no, Robbie was the big dick around this place, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Only, Robbie said, do you know what I do now? I'll congratulate Mark on his brand new six-month-old baby. Yes. So he said to me, and we're five minutes away from doing the show. I'm after doing two hours clean. Clean, clean fucking yeah. crack. Robbie says, and I believe you have a brand new baby, Mark. And I yeah. said, yeah, straight out of the box, Robbie. And Robbie <laughs> just looks at me with... <laughs> yeah. And I immediately said, I was good with it last. There we go. That's the end of my presenting career. Uh, just in one failed swoop. Oh, it's very Gone. funny. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I, you could tell by Robbie's face, he was going, I can't believe we met it this far. <laughs> you were nearly yeah, there. Nearly and you there. Nearly there. Nearly and there. you absolutely ruined your presenting career in one move. Yeah. But I have to say, I did. It was very enjoyable. Yeah. Well, my, that, go on. My favourite thing, I'll just say this. My favourite thing, and this is genuine, about Psycho St. Patrick's Day Parade mm. is um, it's very it's rare that you get that amount of people from Sligo into the same place. Yes. And to see the crack. Now, I don't know what the crack was like after 8 in the evening. I'd say there was Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. But the crack during the day, the kids having the crack, parents having the crack, everyone having the crack, is unreal to see. And it's great that that's still a thing. It doesn't mm. matter where people are from. You in bring the, the kids in to see the favorite parade. Yeah, like, yeah, but like it doesn't matter where people are from in the world. Like, we, like if they've all come to Sligo now and communities haven't been integrated, yes, we'd mm. say. You had a pandemic there where no one could see each other all of a sudden. Then you have people from Ukraine and some Syria and all these different places coming in now. And there's tension there and all this crack. Mm. But the second you just put everyone on the street, you realize... With well, tractors. You realize, yeah, with tractors. Mm. There's parents and kids. Yeah. And that's what it is. Sure, all the same. It's parents and kids, and everyone's having the crack. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the more you integrate, then that's fucking. I thought it was great, and it was great to see the color. There was like an India floss and all the young I Indian the kids. I Indian floss. I was great. They were all I dancing. Think I didn't realize there was such a big Indian community. Like there was a, in the ground, in yeah, the a huge Indian community yeah. in Saigo. There was a huge Ukrainian community that were there who Did were they so grateful. Had they were floating around? They were around. the yeah, ones yeah. with the bombs. No, what? Was no, that? who was no. that? Who was the one with the bombs? Again? It was. It was a float with the bombs. Sorry, it's fake bombs, by the way, just in yeah. case anyone's wondering. No, but it was. It, it was great to see all those communities coming. And even, class. and I know this wasn't Sligo one, but the one was uh, down the country with Enoch Burke, and they were oh, trying to drag him off a trailer. I mean, deadly. I mean, that's. Yeah. I love the humour of the Irish people. Very good. I fucking love the humour of the Irish people. Go on, anyway. Sorry. I just had a small incident from Paddy's there that I wrote down. It's the first note on my notes. Okay. For speaking about today, so right, long okay. ago. But uh, is I, it a gripe? No. Go on. I was. Um, I was out and about, and I met a friend of yours, Keith. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and his lovely lady. Uh, Sinead. Sinead. That's right. And Sinead and me were standing there in a lively bar right. with uh, music playing in the background. Lovely. And I don't know if you've been in these situations, people at home. You know when you can't really hear what someone is saying? And you just go, yeah. You're just smiling <laughs> and yawn. 
And if you d- and the worst thing that can happen to you is if you go, yeah, and then they're looking at you well, going. Uh, stop right there now. I asked you a so question. What she actually did was she told me, so she was talking about taking leave and stuff. She took the wrong day's leave off. And I was going, yeah. And I wasn't getting much of this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awful. And then she said, and I wrote off the car. And, and, and you- I went, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But it just meant yeah. I was just about paying enough attention You're to lucky. hear her. You're lucky. Yeah. Because she, like, the t- like, I'm sure it's happened. I'm sure I've been in a pub and I've said, well, how are you, lovey? Mm. And she goes, my, my granny is dead. She died five minutes ago. And I've gone, yeah, I'm not too bad either. Though. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely happened. Like, oh, you know, I just about caught it. There's nothing where, actually, this happened to me recently. But you have to address this. You have to look dead in the eye and say, I haven't a clue. This <laughs> happened to me, actually, with a guy called Sean recently in Lily's. And it's my fault. Right? I'm deaf as a fucking Porsche because I've been kicking yeah. for too long. He said the same joke to me four times. And I said to him, what? And it got so awkward that the fifth time he was like, I can't believe I'm still. That's what he said to me. I can't believe I'm still trying to explain this to you. I'm not saying it now. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. Because I can't fucking, I don't know what you're on about. So you have to address that straight Very up. Careful, Which yeah. reminds me, how's Evan? How's Evan? Yeah. How's he keeping? You mean, my good <laughs> friend Evan. <laughs> We now, we now know who, from a couple of episodes back, there was a bouncer in Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre whom I did not know his name. Yeah. And in fairness, um, I, I have met him since. He actually messaged me shortly after the episode. Yeah. And Do you he, know all the bouncers from Anderson's listen? Like I know, week. but yeah. that, that was the bad thing. He hadn't heard it. Oh, yeah. So I kind of said to him the next night, I, I said, I was like, well, how are you? I and think he Clarksy went, told him. And he was yeah. absolutely fine. He didn't know issue with me. And I said, you haven't heard the... The podcast yet? No, and he said no, no, I haven't heard any podcast. What are you talking about? No. And then as I was leaving the venue that night, he had a young gentleman pinned down in the ground yeah, that's who had been favorite. causing the trouble. And he says, "How's it going? My name is Evan. Pleased that's, to meet you." That's my favorite part <laughs> of this story is that Evan found out that you didn't know again. You, you didn't yeah. know his name, and while he had an aggravator, aggravated pinned gentleman to the ground, yeah. and he was holding him, he said, "Ray, it's Evan, by the way, Evan, Evan." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I can only imagine the, the, the aggravated man's view yeah. of this. Yeah. One minute the bouncer well, is very well, focused on holding him down. Next yeah. thing he's having this well, light-hearted conversation with there's him. There's actually nothing more belittling in the world that a bouncer while holding down this fella. <laughs> oh, has crack with his friends. He's having a chat. Oh, well, Ray, are you ki- <laughs> ah, not much here now. Just holding down this little pipsqueak. You know, like that is so degrading. It's brilliant. Because nothing worse than these fellas out the night out. It's great to degrade them like that. Fair more. Yeah, go on. So we've done this story in arc. We've done Madeleine McCann. Oh, quick one. Have yeah. you, do, are you aware of the new film from Gerard Butler? No. It's called Plane. Right, okay. Right. It's called... Um, it's brand new. Escape from the Plane. Or it's it, just yeah. called Plane. Right. Right. And and I just wanted to go into this for just for a minute. Yeah. And it's twenty one ninety nine to buy it on iTunes. Fuck off. And it's seventeen ninety nine to uh, rent it. And if you want to go see in the cinema, that's 50 quid. So, I want to ask you. Hang on now. It was 50 quid because you had to get popcorn and it's just 12 euros in. You were bringing in your own sweets, man. Don't you be fucking... I was until they got the giant buttons back in the cinema. <laughs> now I'm paying 6 euros for them. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. You know the name of the film. It's called Plain. Plain. Plain enough. Right. The gentleman who plays the lead is Jared Butler. Yep. You know what Jared Butler is good for. Yep, yep. And I want you to now try and guess the plot of the film. Okay, so Jared Butler... How does it start? Okay, so Jared Butler <laughs> is in an airport. Lovely! Yes! I, can, I fucking know this If film. you can get this right And I promise you I do not know What you're on about I know Okay Jared okay. Butler He's in an airplane He's in an, in, in what's an airport he, What's he dressed as So he is dressed As a normal gentleman But I presume no. He has some kind of Background in security Or I have to give you a clue He's the pilot Alright okay So Jared Butler Is the pilot Pilot So he's in the airport yeah. Rushing for the plane He gets the terrorists Take over the fucking plane Don't they No Oh. They went off on this one a little bit. Oh. So I'm going to give you a little clue. See, can you direct the film as they have directed it? Okay. So he's he's the pilot of the plane. Yeah. Sorry, no, this is an awful spoiler, but it's not because you shouldn't watch this don't film watch, ever. Yeah, don't watch shite <laughs> films. It's me not and Sean O'Reilly, rare enough it happens on Sunday, sat down, yeah. me feeling sorry for myself, Sean needed a break. Yeah. We sat down and watched now hour and 47 of this movie. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> this is actually, can I just say one more thing before we go forward as well? Mm. Me and Nicola are mad to go to the cinema. Yeah. Right? So we were going to ring you and Lauren and see, would you mind Baby Ali, right? Or I thought for a minute there, my heart skipped a beat and I thought you were going to invite me uh, to go with you. No, G. definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to ring and see, would you mind Baby Ali? But like, we realised, even in the midst of Oscar season and everything, I haven't seen a good film in years. No. They're all shit. Yeah. Cinema is so bad. Like, films, I mean. All I want to do is go to cinema and enjoy myself, but there's absolute put there's a fucking film but, out now called Cocaine Bear. Yeah. Jesus Christ Almighty, can we not come up with that in better, even though it's a true story. <laughs> It is, it is a true story. Plain. Plain. 
He's the pilot, gets on the plane, yeah. and he's there. He, obviously, he's got a rookie first officer. Oh, shit, your man's first day in the job. And then here is where it goes then, and then the, the cops bring on a, a convict. Oh, no, there's some Con Air-looking motherfucker. So, yeah, so he's a convict, and he sits down the back. It's very sparsely populated plane, this one. Yeah. It's a, it's going from Singapore to Hong Kong. Right. Right? Right. And they, and they set it up lovely. The gentleman, um, the helper guy that comes on the plane says everything's all right. Yeah. He says there's a bit of weather ahead. Oh, there's weather in front of us. And Jared Butler says, Jesus, uh, we may go around the long way there now and avoid that. And he's not at all. No, I'm going to chip out by Kinnegad. I yeah. think you need to go straight over it. Right, okay. So Jared Butler is considerably worried about this. Right. Now, can you guess what happens next? Okay, Take so off. What, ha- what do you think happens? Turbulence. Yeah. Yeah. What happens So then? he flies in through a storm. Yes. The, the engine goes. Yes. Yeah. The convict is at the back of the plane. Yeah. The rookie... Did your Jared Butler get knocked out or something? Yeah, or yeah he got Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't get fully knocked out, but he gets a bang in the he's head. He's incapacitated. He's not great now. And don't tell me that the convict's like, I can fly planes. No, the convict stays in a seat the whole way. So what's he doing? What, do what with happens story? with the plane? The plane goes down. Yes. Where does it go down? Crash lands in a, in a jungle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they're in a jungle. So he, but they're not crash lands. Oh but he actually God. manages to land the plane in the jungle. So now we're in the jungle, right? Everybody's alive except for the stewardess and the buck that's minding the convict. Because, oh, of course, he tries to get his phone when they're going down and he gets knocked. iPhone 13. And, and of course, yeah. his neck breaks, which is not possible. Jesus Everybody's Christ. neck's breaking everywhere. Jesus Christ, right. I right, mean, so they're in the jungle. What happens next? Jared Butler must be going... <laughs> I can't be asked. Can't be asked. So they're in the jungle, right? Yeah. Right, in the Philippines. Right. Right, what do you think happens next? Is that the end of the film? <laughs> what happens <laughs> What do you think happens next? A ja- Jaguar. Or no, pad- no. It's <laughs> right. You've got, fuck, what, 15 or 20 passengers. It's Still a very alive. quiet plane. They all get off the plane. Jared Butler's there standing. The convict is sitting across the way. They all decide they're going to eat the convict first. No. The d- <laughs> this is the modern world we're living in. They're in. They're on an island. They'll be found soon enough. Yeah, yeah. But what do you think could possibly be the plot twist in this, uh, in this particular film? They're on an, an isolated island in the Philippines. Right. And or they, think- they come across a uh, 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 tribe. No. <laughs> it turns out that they're in purgatory. No, no. They're all dead, but the island is purgatory. <laughs> no, I thought you'd get this quicker. Go on. You were doing so well. Yeah. So the island is obviously inhabited by a rake of feckin' militiamen and gangsters. I said they come across a tribe, you prick. That's not a tribe. When you said tribe, tribe, all I see is spears and underpants. That is your, and that's your thing, hanging Ray. out. <laughs> You're seeing the diddies, Ray. I don't see diddies like that, Ray, in tribes. You heard of a tribe woman. Right, you okay. saw diddies straight away. So you had Big old National saw. Geographical well, diddies. That's uh, what you saw. What do you think the tribe wanted to do with them? Ate them. No! <laughs> now I'm doing it now. Yeah, you no, made me. What do you think the tribe wanted to do with them? Of the, like, they're all in uh, camouflage gear and they've all got guns right. and they've all got jeeps. What do you think they wanted to do? Take them hostage. Take them hostage, exactly. Yeah. And now Jared Butler gets comes into his own. <laughs> yeah. Now he starts to come into his own. Yeah, but who does he need help from? They went a whole way around, <laughs> but they still came back to Jared Butler having yeah. to deal with a hostage situation. And but who's Und- going to help him? The convict. Yes, he knows these. In- he knows these things inside out. Because he used to be in the foreign legion. He used to be in the foreign legion, Ray. Of so course they have he to did. cooperate with each other. Yeah, and yeah. I mean it goes against everything, Jared Butler. But that's fucking life or death, Ray. Yeah. You and know? out of all the nationalities on the plane, which do you think are the two nationalities that get, or the, the one nationality that gets chopped the heads off? Oh, the Irish straight away. No. What? The Asian ones. The, why is that? I don't know. Thing? That's just what happens. <laughs> <laughs> the two Chinese lads, let's, bang, let's heads not gone. Say, let's not obviously ruin the end of the film, even though you have said don't watch this film, I presume. No, it's is terrible. The terrible. What do you think happens next? Uh, okay, so Jared <laughs> Butler and the convicts have to fight everybody off. And fight everybody off, rescue yeah. the hostages. Yeah. How do they get off the island? Do the militia have a plane of their own or a no. helicopter? <gasps> they send out a signal. No. They have to sell their bodies. They actually Sex get swings. The, they actually get the plane. <laughs> but Jared the... Butler sold his body, sold no. cheek. <laughs> no. You're telling me that at the end of this film, Jared Butler, he tried everything, right? Right. He tried everything. He tried finding helicopters, planes, right? Yeah. He tried fighting the militia on his own. Yeah. He tried arming up with a convict. And the convict, no one in prison, said to him, Jared's only one thing you can do here is sell cheek. <laughs> Bend over and sell some cheek, Jared. What ends and the film, the last half hour of the film, is not artistically done at all. <laughs> There's no music. It's just loads of... Uh, it's loads of militiamen gross. taking pictures of Jared Butler <laughs> in, in an abandoned way. But it's really <laughs> bad sound. There. It's like... Uh, 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 and it's just after a half an hour. It's real fucking sinister. 
Can you imagine if he just took that turn? And it was only it was only after the edit that they were like, shit, we didn't do that tastefully at all. Like, it's really dark lit. Never, it's, oh. 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 Imagine. Yeah. He yeah. Accent. He's like, all right. Oh. <laughs> no, but it's even the buys. Even the buys in the aisle. It's just like. Uh, okay, okay. So it just takes that turn. It's all like. <laughs> 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 no, stop. And then it just stops. Right, Jared, bend over. The, the, funny enough, the airline. The airline drop in the A team. Like four right. lads with massive guns. Oh, yup, yup, To yep. come in and help Jared Butler and the convict rescue the hostages. Yeah. But they've no way of getting off the island. So Jared Butler comes up with a plan. We're going to fly us out. In a so he manages to get crashed. the plane that crashed back up on the ground, what off the you? ground. A Boeing 747. Yeah, and goes 50 miles across the water and then lands over in the Philippines. <sighs> but of course, all the terrorist lads are shooting at them as they're taking off. Yeah. And the head terrorist guy, wait till you hear this. Go on. Just as the plane is taking off, Jared Butler manages to take the head clean off him with the front wheel of the plane. Oh my God, am I <laughs> Doesn't get doesn't get any more stupid. And than that. it just about lands 50 miles away in the other island. And you can and who do you think is the last man off the plane? Jared the convict Jared no, Butler Jared Butler And he steps off And yeah. everyone's like Everyone applauses <laughs> <laughs> Yeah yeah. So Jared Butler Has saved presidents Prime ministers Oh everything And then he sold cheek On the Philippines <laughs> To save 25 hostages If they actually did it The way you suggested It probably would be It would be weird yeah. Me and Sean Sitting there With the curtain closed On Sunday watching <laughs> I just think, Ray, that heroes come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, and I think Hollywood has a tendency to display heroes as alpha males. like. Yeah. But sometimes the hero is the fella who takes it. Do you know? <laughs> he just took it. Who just bends over and takes it. Sometimes he's the hero. You know? Thanks, thanks very much, Mark. I, I won't lie to you. That was one of the best laughs I've had in a while. <laughs> I have um, a few little bits to wrap up. Go on, that's yeah. all right. Uh, yeah. First of all, you're familiar with the Taylor Swift song. Uh, anti hero. Hi. It's me. Yeah. I'm, the I'm the problem. It's me. Which I'm is funny, man, because she must be the most selfish old bitch. Going. But you know what I mean? But you know what the worst thing is? You don't hear that song enough. You do start thinking, maybe I am the problem. Oh, well, I've always thought I was the problem. But it's, like. I think it's actually ruining the country. Because that everyone's going. Everybody's hearing this. Hi, yeah. it's me. I'm, I'm the, the problem. problem. It's, it's me. me. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the one thing I will <laughs> say about Taylor Swift is I don't think she believes a word of that. No. Not no. the fuck does she believe. She thinks everyone else is the problem. I sold the van. What? I sold the new van. I was going to say this to you as well. Ray had to get a lift down to the house today, and for a man who owns two vans, I've never seen someone no. with such little transport. What happened? Either way, I got a buyer for it in Tipperary. No way. Nice, lovely gentleman by the name I of Ryan. I hope he didn't listen to the podcast where you were saying it was a bag of shite. The help of God, he didn't. <laughs> no, in fairness to you, you didn't sell it as a bag of shite. It just no, didn't work for you. I like. put about two grand's worth of fucking repairs into it. Yeah, yeah. And then I sold it. Yeah, it's lost. a nice van. I can't believe it. It's lovely that. now, yeah. But Jeez. it's gone. But it nearly didn't go. Why? When we were out for the test drive, myself and Brian, he had come up from Tipperary to get the van. Right. He had all the money with him yeah. in a bag. Right. In fivers. He had a bag of money. <laughs> bag <laughs> of fivers. <laughs> <with him. laughs> I'll give you 2,000 fivers and I'll leave it at that. I'll give you any more than that. <laughs> a big, massive bag of fivers. Jesus. And I was sitting on the dry, passenger seat and I was sitting beside the money looking at it all. Excited. Have you ever seen that much money before? Never seen that many fivers. In cash. But anyway, I was, of course, being me, trying to say, look, I've had this van now for a month and a half, and I've learned everything about it, I'm going to try and impart some of this wisdom to you so you don't have to go through what I went through. You sold it to him for two grand, didn't you? <laughs> no, no. I was telling him about all the bits on the dashboard, about how to work things, and oh, I was yeah. saying, there's a passenger airbag, that's the light there for it, right. to say what it's at. Now, I accidentally pressed a different button, which was the traction control. And the fucking van was swung into a ditch. <laughs> no, I press the traction control and whatever it does, and mechanically minded people out there might know this, but it basically um, caused the van to rev uncontrollably. So after I pressed it, all of a sudden it started revving uncontrollably um, as we hit the motorway, the dual carriage come back Jesus into town. Christ. And he says to me, that sounds like the clutch is slipping. And I was going, oh my God, I'm after spending a grand oh, and a half trying no. to get this yoke right. And now it's broken again and he's not going to buy it. He's going to bring all these fivers back to Tipperary. How does traction control make I the I don't know, but it, it took me at least 10 minutes to I try and I thought traction out. control was for boys with eyebrow piercings. <laughs> you turn it off and then you can slip. You can go sliding. Something like that. You know I the boys know. that go sliding around the road? Like, yeah. You know, and they've all, everyone them have eyebrow piercings. Anyway... <laughs> Anyway, I figured out that it was a traction control. Switched it back off and everything was fine. Can I tell you... So can I ask you a question? Sure. Especially when you're selling the van, this must be true. Did he spit in the hand? When he was... No, fine. actually. Did he go... No. 
Are you sure you sold the van at all? Then? <laughs> if you're selling... It mightn't be sold at all. If you're selling commercial real estate <laughs> or cars, you have to spit in the law, boy. Um, I, I have another thing here. A hobosexual, you know what that is? Are you writing the homeless again, Ray? <laughs> no, a homosexual is a person who dates you with the sole interest of having a place to stay. Oh! Not good. That's unbelievable. Yeah. A hobosexual. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me you could be out... Get, no, I won't say that, actually. Yeah. Never mind. I'd definitely not say what I was going to say. Uh, I have another one. Um, a gentleman, uh, Sean O'Sullivan, wrote in. Oh, yeah. He says he lives on the top floor of a pretty standard flat complex in Dublin. Right. In the past few weeks, I've noticed that the people in apartments one through six, so the bottom uh, first floors only, are basically always visibly ill with colds, sniffles and the like. Everyone else in the building is grand from, from like, flat seven up. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me to read that one now. I thought Fuck. that was funny. Ray, okay, I have two more things before we go. I have two more things. I have a shout out as well. Oh yeah, go on. Do you want to do yours up. first? Shout out to Amy. Okay, she is a quantity surveyor. Right. Fair play to her. Right. Have to get. She just. She said that we didn't do her shout outs. Right. There's her shout out there now. Stop. Cut, she counts bricks. What? That's what she does. She was. She, she counts she bricks. Count bricks. She counts bricks. Pricks. Bricks. Oh, counts bricks. <laughs> Right, okay. Fair enough. Fair play, Jamie. Love That's me. not enough bricks in that. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play, Jamie. Uh, come here. I, I have to shout out Caroline because we, we were supposed to give her a shout out on her birthday. Oh, yes. You know, Lily Caroline, Goosewax. But, yeah, Lily Goosewax. Her birthday was in January. We were supposed to shout her out. We never did. Didn't so, we not send her a present instead? Well, she got onto us on Patreon and said, You shower bastards. I'm going to listen to the Jew Johnny's. Mm. Right, because we didn't shout her out on her birthday. So, big shout out to Caroline on her second yeah. birthday again. Yeah. Uh, keep selling Nicola waxes. She fucking loves them. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and then the other thing is, I can't even remember, which is fucking is it terrible. Tommy and Hector taking a break. And Tommy and Hector are taking a break, and now we're going to take over the world. Yeah. Yeah, so we're coming for you now. You I'm ever- sick that they're taking a break. It's my favourite podcast ever. <laughs> No, it is like I absolutely love it. I actually pay their Patreon, by the way. I, Do I, you? I no, well, I pay their ACAS Plus, like oh, yeah. So, but you can pay us to get lovely watch the video, segue uh, on, on patreon.com forward slash Kendi and Raybo. Yeah, I do it for it's for Tommy and Hector, so you can yeah. do it for me if you do want. You. Yeah, um, do you ever look at the two Johnnies and go, that could have been us? Never, no, no, they're far better. No, like there's no way. Do you believe I, that for one but, minute? But I know, but I look at them and I kind of go, are we going to get to do all that no. or are we just not? No, no, definitely not. No, no, they're so then, far more polished than we so are. So then what is left for us to do? Nothing. We just have to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> just That's do it. this. Yeah, no, no. We have to be very realistic, Ray. Okay. Please don't get ahead of yourself. It's just because Brendan has been filling our minds full of dreams, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, but you're like, I mean... I wouldn't be listening to that fellow. <laughs> Fair enough. Why would you be listening to Brendan on dreams? So, I know, it's just, yeah, if we're not going to get to do all those things. I seen they did a big what? show in London. No, never. And Daryl Brian went to it. Not a chance. And then they guested on another, uh, the Irish candy or the English candy in Rainbow. Yeah, yeah. I actually listened to that. Oh, did you? Was yeah, it good? Yeah, they were very funny. I can't express this enough, Ray. We are so rough around the edges. Mm. There's no way we'll ever get anywhere with yeah. this, only just having the crack. In fairness, I suppose when you look at our content of this episode, the story of Knock and Jared Butler taking it in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> and that was our episode. Did you know Jared Butler took it up the Philippines? <laughs> Ah, uh, fucking hell. Uh, Listen, patreon.com forward slash Kenzie Rainbow Podcast. Good to have Brenda back flicking the keys to himself. Thanks very much to Nanderson's uh, Tremendous Event Center. Uh, and the Blind Tiger. Blind Tiger for sponsoring us. And let us do it. Kenzie's mic is bought. We'll be here in Yo, a week and a half. You're going to sound just as sexy as me. Oh, I can't shag it, Ray. Ray, fair play to me. Fair play to me. Good luck. Good luck. Kendi and Rainbow Podcast, sponsored by Anderson's Tremendous Event Centre and Wonderful Food Items, and the Blind Tiger's Marvellous Alcoholic Fruit Drinks.